the challenge of the Yukon. King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. (laughs) Darkness was punctuated by the light of a bobbing lantern as old man Higgins made a tour of his trap lines. Since his ermine pelts netted him more than any other trapper in the North... This idiosyncrasy of carrying a light came to be accepted, and Higgins and his lantern were as well known in watch fob as the cluster of rocks he rounded nightly. The old man walked with a limp. The light he swung at his side, falling at intervals on a greasy old Mackinaw and a matted gray beard. He approached the rock formation, a temporary protection against the piercing wind, when suddenly from the darkness in front of him, he stumbled, fell, his face twisting for a moment his eyes straining to see the man who had fired from the darkness. The lantern flickered and burned through the night. But I tell you, I saw it myself. Ah, You're daft, Pete. Right on top of the rocks. That lantern was burning as bright as the one old man Higgins used to carry. That was six months ago. Well, what's the difference? Six months ago, a year. It's there. I tell you, that light was on top of them rocks. If you ask me, it's the spirit of Higgins looking for the man that murdered him. Ride past Lantern Rock at night? Not me. Yeah, but Sam, I gotta get these first to machete. That don't mean a thing to me. When I ride my sled, I'm riding alone. Not with any ghost dog in my trail. I'll give you a hundred dollars if you make that trip. No, sir. There ain't a soul on two feet will make that trip except in daylight. I wouldn't do it for a thousand dollars. And so the story grew until it became almost a legend. Strong men, miners toughened by years in the heart of the North, who knew the bitterness of disappointment and the exultation of seeking and finding gold, they gathered in cafes and spoke of what they saw in hushed voices. Two years passed, and in the Purple Fan Cafe, early in the afternoon... Say, ain't that Dave Watson? I believe you're right. He sure has changed. Looks like a man that's down on his luck. Miss Black would be glad to see him. Seems Dave saved his life once while they were prospecting together. Dave! uh, Dave Watson! Yeah. Uh, By golly, it's good to see you. How you been? Fine, Pete. How about you? Oh, can't complain. Uh, What do you have? It's on me. Oh, the old special's good enough for me. Right. Two specials, Red. Uh, Seen Miff yet? No. No, I just got in, to tell the truth. I hear he has a pretty nice strike out near Landon Rock. Yep, that's so. Of course, he ain't never been able to get anyone to help him any out there. That is, except that fella he called Shorty. (laughs) With them lights appearing on the rock, there ain't a man this side of Juno will be around the place two hours at a stretch. Oh, Preston. Hmm. He'll be mighty pleased to see him. Hey, Sergeant. Hello there, Pete. Hey, Hello, Sergeant. Well, this is a surprise. What brings you back to Watch Fob after all this time? Oh, I came back to see Miff. I, uh... Well, I ain't had much luck lately, so I figured maybe I could help him out for a space. Well, he always said half what he had was yours, Dave. After that accident. That looks like your drinks, boys. Yeah, I know better than to ask you to have a drink, Sergeant. So, here's to you, Dave. Thanks, Pete. I'm going out to Miff's place myself. We are? I'll take you out with me whenever you're ready to leave. Well, that's right now, then. A short time later, as Sergeant Preston and Dave walked from the sled to Miff's cabin. Did you let Miff know you were coming? No, I I didn't. Thought I'd surprise him. You probably will. 
He's got a nice place here. Yes, he... I think he's coming. Sergeant Preston, what brings you here? Hello, Miff. Well, I'll be... Dave, where in the world did you come from? You're not going to let us stand out here, are you? Oh, I was so surprised. Uh, why, sure, come on in. Well, I haven't seen Dave for six years. Yeah, it's been a long time. Some place you got here. Oh, it's all right. Here, sit down. Where are you heading for? Dave's come to help you. Yeah, I thought oh, I'd... Well, you're welcome to stay around. You know that, Dave? Well, thanks. Thanks, Miff. I was hoping you'd say that. You see, I... Struck a streak of hard lux. It's just about done me in. Whatever I can do for you, I will. But say, how come you're in these parts, Sergeant? Well, as a matter of fact, Miff, I was coming out to see you anyway when I bumped into Dave at the Purple Fan. Oh. What do you got on your mind? Robberies. Gold and fur. Robberies? Well, there have been a lot of them lately, and I have a hunch the gang is operating from around here. Well, what makes you think so? Well, I've eliminated every other possibility. Your own gold may be in danger, Miff. Oh, I haven't noticed any. Surely you've heard about it. No. Oh, I've been sticking pretty close to the cabin. I don't get into town much, but maybe one of the boys would know something. Uh, I hoped you might know something about them. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Well, that is, unless you'd call some funny things have been happening around here lately. Part of a setup or something. Shorty! Hey, Shorty! Yeah? Come here. I want you to meet a friend of mine. Shorty, this is Dave Watson. Please meet you. How are you? You know Sergeant Preston. Yeah, sure. I know the money. What did you mean, Miff? Funny things happening. Oh, nothing that I can put my finger on. I'm thinking of giving up this business. Giving up the business? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't said nothing about You've it. You've got but... a good strike here, haven't you? Oh, I got enough gold. Suppose you tell us. Well, for a long time, other fellows have been telling stories about a lantern on the rocks yonder. I never thought much about it, but I'm beginning to see it myself lately. You've checked for footprints? Oh, ain't never any around. <laughs> I don't know. Now, it's my own opinion no human hand sets it there. You're not a man to believe in ghosts. It's probably no more than the reflection of the moon. Well, maybe so. Late that night, after Sergeant Preston had turned his team back toward Watch Bob and Dave Watson had gone to bed, Miff beckoned to Shorty Williams, who followed him out of the cabin. Now, maybe you'll tell me what this is all about. What's eating you, Miff? What's this guy staying out here for? You going down? I'll take it easy. Listen, Shorty, Preston suspects that gang stealing golden furs is staked in these parts. That don't mean nothing to us. As long as he don't suspect... Shut up and listen to me. You know as well as I do, we can't have anyone hang around here long. Dave don't see any mining going on. He's going to wonder where our gold comes from. Maybe that lantern will scare him away. Why don't you just tell him to leave? I can't do that. Don't you understand? I made a bargain with him six years ago. I said that half of what's mine was his when he saved me from that landslide. But six years is a long time ago. A long time. In Watch Bob, a week later, Sergeant Preston walked into the Purple Fan Cafe. Hey, hiya, Sergeant. Dave Watson's looking for you. Where is he, Slim? Oh, I see him. Thanks. Hello, Dave. Slim said you were looking for me. Yes, Sergeant. How are you? Fine. What brings you to town? I thought you were... Oh, I'm in to get supplies, but I want to talk to you. Well, let's go over here, then. Sit down. All right. Sergeant, Sergeant, I won't waste any time. I heard Miff struck gold. Well, yes, he's supposed to have one of the... Well, that's just it. I've been mining gold most of my life, pulling it out of cricks and blasting it out of rock. But what I want to know is this. If a man's doing hard rock mining, how come he gets coal dust? Well, I don't know. Well, I'm up there blasting away, and I ain't hit no gold. But Miff, he's got enough dust to lay the floor. Hmm. Did he say where he got the dust? Sure, he says he got it out of his claim. I think King and I'll have to look into this, Dave. Don't tell Miff you were talking to me. Investigating Dave's story, Sergeant Preston and King came upon the lantern burning brightly on top of the rocks that night. His curiosity aroused, 
the Mountie looked for footprints, but found none. Instead, he discovered a tunnel behind the rocks. The next day, talking to Dave... Now, Dave, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to leave... That night in Miff's cabin, while Dave was out getting wood... Well, I... I got it set up again. Well, that lantern on them rocks has thrown a heap of fear into a lot of men. I uh, hope it throws some into him. Hey, Miff. That lantern out on the rocks. Yeah? It's moving. What? Moving? That's right. Well, let me see. Hey. It, it is moving. Yeah. You here? I'm here. There it is out there. Moving around. It ain't human. The next morning, as soon as there was light enough to see, Shorty was out at the rock, covering the ground carefully. Returning to the cabin... Did you find any tracks? Only some wolf tracks. Oh, no wolves carrying a light. Miff... I, I'm through. What do you mean, through? You're not going to let this... Be... I've faced a lot of things in my life. i killed a lot of men. But when that lantern starts moving I'll around... Wait till tonight. If it happens tonight, we'll take our guns. Shorty paced the floor restlessly as darkness settled over the Yukon. Urged by Miff to set the lantern out, he flatly refused to leave the cabin, when suddenly Dave pointed to the light, bobbing along. Come on, Shorty. I'm going to have a look at that. Go, go out there? Not me. Well, you got your gun. Gun? What good's a gun against something that don't even leave footprints? I'll go out. You you will. All right, Dave, go on. Uh, here's a gun in case you need it. I'll be back in a few minutes. Ah, you, you oughtn't to let him go. Why not? I can't see nothing out of this window. That light keeps... Hey, it's coming this way. No. No! Oh, it's gone. Dave? Where's Dave? Maybe you've got him. Oh, you're talking like he was crazy. Dave! Dave! I saw it. I saw it. What'd you see? Come on in here. What was it now? Come on, speak up. You look like you've seen a ghost. Ghost. That's it. Holding the light like he was looking for something. What did it look like? A little shorter than Miff. Old, no, an old man. And he walked with a limp. I could make that out. Because the lantern would swing a bit. As he started towards me, I, I got a look at the face. Yeah? Go on. Well, he had a beard, a gray one. But his Mackinac had a patch of red on it right over the heart. Like he'd been shot or something. Yeah, shot? And then I pulled the gun you gave me, Miff. And he just kind of disappeared. Old man Higgins. No, no, it couldn't be. I shot him dead with my own gun. And now... Yeah, and that must have been the blood. We should have done it. He wasn't even carrying a gun. Shut up. You got your share of them pelts, didn't you? Share? What good's a share when I'll be haunted for the rest of my life? It's Higgins looking for the man that shot him. Looking for me. Oh, you killed men before. Stealing, killing, but never... Hey, what's that? I thought so. So you're both behind those robberies and murders. Press the nose. Right. Put up your hands. It was a nice job, Dave. And as for King here, well, he's the best lantern carrier I've ever had. Lantern? Yes. King's been carrying that lantern these last two nights, Shorty. I kept him hid in the tunnel Sergeant Preston found behind the rocks. No, it was a trick. You mean Higgins wasn't... Dead men don't walk, Shorty. I arrest both of you. You'll hang for the crimes you've committed. <laughs> yes, King, with your help, another case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bill Morgan speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>